Hello, welcome to Garden Chronicles. My name is James David. Earlier, before this particular video, I have done a landscape work whereby the fence and the gate, in a way that I've removed all these overgrown philodendron mikan together with other plants that is very much ornamental, especially the asparagus fern together with maidenhair fern. However, I would like to focus more on the philodendron mikan here and what I have actually taken place and what I have done towards concerning this particular plant. So here I want to explain to you more on the detailed effect of what has taken place here. Just a quick introduction based on this particular philodendron mikan. It has been said that it is a native plant surrounding the Caribbean region. However, there is also another source that mentioned that it is a hybrid with another two different types of philodendron, which is very much similar with the hard leaf philodendron. However, regardless of their uniqueness of their origin, what I find is that they do have a beautiful effect when it comes to their leaves, especially the iridescent kind of effect, both front and the back, based on the amount of light that it receives. Do take note that the more light that it receives, especially even direct hot sun, the leaves do tend to turn more on a reddish burgundy tones and if it's very much kept in more on a shaded areas it will be a little bit more on a green tones do take caution though that if he receives too much direct hot sun on the leaves the leaves do tend to get burnt by the sides or, or the corners I might say that I have come across a few different types of the same variation known as philodendron melichrysum, even philodendron gigas. There is a factor that these leaves appear to be almost alike, especially the type of the colors and the specific features. The only difference is that both the earlier ones that I mentioned, the gigas and the melichrysum, these leaves do tend to grow a little bit more larger and longitudinal. In a way, both those two leaves are considered a little bit more on a rare scale and sold in a very high premium prices. In that context, I would always recommend a new beginner or someone who is just newly introducing themselves for a trial and error basis. I find that Mikan is one of the best plants to actually to get your hands on to figure out exactly how the philodendron actually handles in your garden condition. Once you have mastered that effect with philodendron mikan, I would really encourage you to try on other more challenging and difficult types of philodendrons. Based on my personal experience, I find that philodendron mikan grows in an exceeding fast growth, at least to a, a percentage which I can actually say about easily about 300% in based on what I've noticed that when it grew compared to other philodendron species this particular one is gross as if it is an invasive species it has actually taken over the whole portion of my garden even though it is actually growing from a singular pot hence i find that for a new beginner you will, will be best to try on this and figure out exactly what the plants need and care requires before get into more on those challenging types i find that when uh, this particular philodendron when it grows on a support especially if it is on a totem pole or has an area where it climbs the leaves do tend to grow a little bit bigger and the stems appears to be slightly large but it doesn't really envelop into a huge size plant now coming to the next introduction is that i have actually trimmed a lot of all this plants into cuttings and i have actually experimenting both on water and soil and i would like to share on my experience concerning them just some few pointers when it comes to propagation. In most cases, I've noticed that some of the other gardeners mentions that they trim a singular node and planting them in using spanner moss or perlite. In my case, actually using two to three nodes as a way to find that the, that kind of cuttings seems to last longer and more hardy in comparison to a singular node. Especially when it comes to my opinion, I find that when you cut more 
from two to three it does pass however more than that the plants do tend to become more floppy especially the real leaves do tend to curl and roll over in a way to show that it's actually stressed do ensure that once after cut put them in water at least within that first hour because if not the plant may show some sign of stress here are the ones that I've actually managed to trim. There are about three bottles full which I've managed to cut and place them in this uh, condition. <laughs> Majority of it is actually roughly you can see about four, three to two to three nodes in a cutting where the bottom part I have trimmed off the leaf and just leave uh, a stem without any leaves so that it can go into the water. Another factor that I've noticed that when it comes to some philodendrons, they don't do so well if they are grouped together in a tight spot as what I've done over here. In, in case there is one particular stem that starts to rot, the whole collection will rot away. So do take note that if you intend to keep them for at least about a week's time, do change the water regularly and check on any, any of the stems if it is any sign of rot taking place. Because if it does so, the whole thing can get destroyed and you have lost the whole collection. However, in my context, I'm just keeping them in water just for a day so I just have more time to propagate them on the next day in a soil medium, which I've done over here. This one to show to you. This is the next day uh, of planting or what has taken place. Basically, the medium that I've used is the same existing medium which I sh shown in my earlier video where it is composed of a uh, regular potting mix together with coconut chips and sand and compost. So in a way, I've just placed all of them at the side and grouped together in a way that I'm uh, planning to put a stick or a totem pole later on when the plant has established itself. Do keep the potting medium moist but not dripping wet another fact that you have to keep an eye on it is that not to make sure that the leaves curls up but that would be a sign to say that the plant is not doing well do take note to observe the plant on a daily basis to see any yellowing of the leaves or curling of the leaves and if you ever notice after about a week's time one to two weeks if there is a sign of new growth then the plant it means that it has actually established itself one of the most Im important and the most difficult factor when it comes to humidity is that if lack of which the plant can wither away. So if you uh, if in a place where humidity is challenging, do use a plastic wrap around it and just observe to see whether there is any growth taking place. I can say that within a week's time then if at all the leaves are in an open position there is no curling or rolling of the leaves then the plant has considered in a stable condition. These are the ones that I managed to trim and place them in these containers. I would like to share a personal tips here on how I propagate my plants. Basically when it comes to a long wine such as this, what I will do here is that to define and to label the top and the bottom. Normally the top part I will normally cut straight and when it comes to the one at the bottom part where it's going to go to the soil, I will cut diagonally. So in a way from this, in case this pieces of stem get mixed up I don't have to figure out exactly where is the top and bottom rather from these cuttings where when it comes to a diagonal cutting at the bottom I will know that that is supposed to go into the water or into the soil so that is a small matters that really gives you uh, a position where you don't have to f stress out if the stems get mixed up set of mikan that I actually planted in a medium sized spot. Uh, however, this particular piece is one long piece of mikan wine that which I have not uh, trimmed. I, I was actually want to experiment it and see how they actually fare if I were to put a pole on it, sort of like a stick actually, and I want to see how they handle it. I have deeply buried uh, a big portion of the root ball inside together with uh, 
an extra pieces of all the stem inside of it but this is actually one piece I must make an emphasis to say that this one is actually uh, was actually growing on the fencing which is doing so well and I decided to put it in a totem pot because I find that if I were to let it go it will actually overwhelm my gate and uh, my fence which is over here you could have actually seen this in my earlier video when I actually explained uh, how it has actually enveloped and overwhelmed this place so I actually removed this whole thing and actually placed it here now uh, I'm, I'm actually aware of what is going to take place but I, I just want to try it out and see whether it works differently for philodendron mikan and true enough like most philodendron and uh, aroid species and the whining type even photos and satin photos they all do this they curl up the leaf this particular sign is to say that the plant is stressed so i thought that it will last about two to three days and then it will revert back to normal but it did not eventually it is dying a few of the leaves are turning yellow you can notice over here so it's actually a telltale sign that it's not going to recover i have to undo this whole thing trim it and cut it and replant it back uh, in a shorter version no doubt the aerial roots and everything looks appears to be healthy uh, you see over here earlier in the beginning it was fresh looking but now it's dried up so this this event how do you say this situation here is to say that the plant is not going to recover so do not if you coming across in this kind of situation do not leave the plant like this it can sustain and last for another two to three days at most even if you were to water it and uh, care for it and put in a high humidity if it doesn't recover it's too late now let's say for example uh, I decide not to do anything about it so this is the first sign after this it's going to be like this and this <laughs> then the leaf is going to dry up and drop okay this, this is a sign that's going turning yellow then it will dry off then after this it won't even recover this particular stem it is going to turn brown or raw and before you know it uh the main stem is over here is also going to rot so the whole thing is a gone gone here so the only way you can do it is to trim uh by their notes so basically some some of the gardeners will mention that they will actually trim just a singular note and plant it this 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 long and you just put it in uh, a moss and polite and let it regenerate back i normally uh, use about two to three nodes because i have too much of it and i don't want so many hence i prefer to uh, keep it and keep it long because one of the things i can mention to you is that if the nodes are long chances of survival is high if it's short like one node if you were to trim one node and you put it in polite and moss uh, it can rot so I don't want to take forever because what's going to happen is that a new shoot is going to appear from this okay, no, it's not okay. a new shoot is going to come from this particular node and we're going to take can you see that just beside the leaf okay so the new the, the new node is going to come from this and basically it's going to take about two to three months for it to sprout out and that's actually a very long time so i prefer not to wait so long which i will i would rather use two to three nodes where it will actually regenerate faster so in come to terms with one photos and epiphorums or even monstera if you have a long piece do has do not hesitate to trim them because uh, even though it's a very long piece and if you would try to use it 
uh, to use on a pole uh, it may not be successful so do take note about that when it comes to philodendron even though if you bury the whole root ball into a into a big medium pot its chances of it's not going to work if the piece is being uh, transferred and the root ball has been a little bit damaged and you trim it and try it uh, it would be different if you total transfer but this was not this was more like cut from a, a long winding piece and planted here so I have to redo this whole thing but for this purpose of this video I actually wanted to show to you uh, how it will actually behave uh, in the context of if you were to use it in this kind of uh, situation another thing that I want to mention to you here is that this particular one is just sticks I'm not using a moss pole it may be behave differently on a moss pole but I also tried it with the moss pole before and it didn't really work uh, I, I used this uh, philodendron lip lupinum on it and even satin photo it didn't really work so just something like this you see uh, this is actually uh, syngonium and the, it's not really but this is very much experimental for me so I, I'll come back more detail on this or why it did not work and, and the reasons for it but my focus here is more to do with the mikan here so let me get back to you when I trim this and I put it in water and I'll show you to you on the uh, updates on this particular piece of reviving it back I have at least about another two to three days to do this if not I might lose the whole plant do it soon before rot takes place because if there is a rot taking place then it will be a 50% chances of it that the plant might die and all you can say if there's bits here and there and you might lose the whole plant so do take note on that, that not to allow any rot take place as I mentioned to you this is a sign to say that the plant is not receiving nutrients though no doubt it is stressed so that's about me can this is basically day three after inspection just as i suspected the plant did not recover the leaves started to turn more yellow and it started to disintegrate as what i was afraid that it turned out to be this particular piece as i mentioned earlier in that earlier clip is that one whole piece and i just want to experiment on it and see whether you can actually pick up we just will never know like other philodendrons this particular one can be a bit different so however it was not hence i have decided to start trimming the whole piece and uh, this is a speed of four I was a little bit disappointed because I was expecting it that I would be able to keep this as a main piece as these particular stems are quite thick than usual and it appears to be more matured and the leaves are slightly bigger. However, truth be told, if I were to be uh, denial about it, I would have lost the whole plant, hence the trimming is required. One of the factors that I've noticed is that when the plant is actually matured, and uh, if you ever notice that when it comes to the mid range and all the way to the top the stems appears to be longer when it comes to the span of the nodes meaning that in between two nodes they will be much more longer and maybe a little bit challenging in a fact that if you were to see that if you were to cut for three nodes so in this kind of cases i will just try to keep it everything within uh, one feet zone so most probably it will be just be two nodes as they are quite long again as i mentioned before i'm not too keen in growing any plants with one singular node as i have had bad experiences with it especially when it comes to too much wetness and in the factor of humidity especially coming to my garden space where they can easily get rot and the other factor here is that i don't want to have 
two mini plants in a small garden especially i don't want to have about 200 300 mikans growing in small tiny garden hence keeping it with two notes and eventually i'm able to give away as gifts or see perhaps if i'll be able to sell it but knowing these particular plants they are so common nowadays so in a way i believe that gifting will be more practical than anything as I always mention in all the tips that I would like to say is always make sure that your cutting tools is sterile and clean before using them because they can carry pathogens or any of the fungus if you were to use it to trim any of the dying or rotting leaves and may have forgotten. So do have the habit of washing first before using the tools for trimming and cutting. Another tip that I often do is that I will always try to retain and find for the bottom part with roots and intentionally snip off the bottom leaves off so that it would not be sit in water when I'm waiting for it to regenerate. In a way I find that when leaves are actually underneath or grown together in a potting media, chances of that particular leaf may rot and may even cause the stem to rot hence i normally will trim the leaves off but try my best to retain the leaf at the top part of it in a way with the two nodes one at the bottom with just the roots and then the one on the top with the leaf this way it ensures more of stability for the plant to grow this is my style of habit of trimming that the top portion of it i will cut it flat and the bottom part of it i'll cut it diagonally just to ensure that if the, the pieces and the stem get mixed up I know exactly which is the top and which is the bottom as for now I will let all these plants cutting to sit in water for a few days for it to regenerate back from the stress it has received and hopefully it will show some sign of regeneration in a few days time in my normal practice, normally I'll keep aside a bucket of water for overnight and use that for watering my plants, especially in application for using with uh, foliar fertilizer or in cases such as this, just for to make sure that it doesn't lace with chemicals, especially chlorine, that will actually cause more damage for this kind of stressed plants. Now you can actually see the leaves are actually curled up. Now these are the telltale signs the plant is actually going through stress. But I believe that it will actually recover back in few days time. Basically I'll be keeping this in a bright shaded area and see how it goes in the next few days. Coming to the summary of what I would like to share about concerning philodendron mikan, my tip number one. Philodendron mikan is a fast growing plant, it's a winding plant, so giving a trailing position like a fence or stick or totem pole for it to climb, it will grow faster than any other philodendrons or even any other aroids put together. Coming to my tip number two, put the philodendron mikan in more on a bright light area for more red tones and also put it more on a bright shaded area for greener tones. These colors actually varies according to the brightness receives on the leaf surface. Coming to my tip number three, philodendron mikan is actually more of a beginner plant to try on an experiment in comparison to other philodendron especially when it comes to the expensive types that appears to look very similar like philodendron malacrasum and gigas in a way i find that these plants are very pricey and sold in premium prices however they look very much alike and very much have the same similar features Coming to my tip number four, this is when you see the plant is stressed. Whenever you see the leaves are curling inward and rolled over, do take a quick attention to it and check and see whether any rot is taking place because this is a telltale sign that the plant is actually facing stress. Uh, immediate attention given to it, you can actually save the plant from the whole plant rotting away or dying away. 
My tip number five is more on propagation method. I normally use two to three nodes for propagation, especially and I find it that it's much more stable and able to handle stress in comparison to the ones of that is being used for a single node propagation, where it is much more slow growing and may easily rot if something goes wrong. My tip number six is my trimming method. I normally trim the part of the stem, especially when it comes to the crown part. I will normally cut it flat as an indication that that is the top. And at the part that is at the bottom, I will normally cut it diagonally so that it will be able to receive more water and nutrients and as the root grows. This particular one actually helps me to denote that I will know where is the top and where is the bottom because in case the stems get mixed up and if it's all bare without any root sign of roots or a sign of leaves, I will know which is the top and bottom. And this will really saves me a lot of headache as these particular plants are very fussy when it comes to a place of growth. They will always like to be aligned where they need to grow according to their growing condition. My tip number seven is basically when placing the stem in water first, it will actually help the cutting to hydrate before planting and transplanting them straight to a potting medium, especially when the cutting is actually stressed out. As in the case where such as this, where the leaves are rolled over, it will not do good if it's going through another set of stress, if it's just going to just handling it by regrowing back so it's the best to regenerate back to hydrate itself in a in a water and in the two to three, three days once the leaves have unrolled and appear to be fresh it'll be an ideal time to, to propagate it using a soil medium tip number eight if you are planning to keep these cuttings more than two days, do regularly change the waters, especially within two to three days times at least once to avoid any rot taking place inside the water container. Tip number nine, if you are keeping more than several cuttings in a cup or bottle, say you are lacking of any containers and you are bunching it up at least about 20-30 cuttings in a container, do check for any rot that takes place especially if you were to put them together with any leaves or rotting stem immediately remove those infected parts before uh, the whole thing gets infected because in most cases if it's not been taken care of the whole collection will rot away and you will lose everything that is inside that container my tip number 10, do not apply any fertilizer until you see a new growth appears. Placing a fertilizer can actually burn the existing new roots as if they are overfed, they can cause root rot and you may lose the plant. Tip number 11, do not allow more than three nodes in a singular cutting as the plant may be very stressed out and may not grow properly. Tip number 12, the best potting medium that I actually use is supposed to be fast draining and also able to hold moisture. I personally use compost, coconut chips and sand. Tip number 13, if humidity is of a great challenge, do put the potting plant or the, plant, the cuttings in a plastic bag for it to retain moisture. You may also slowly remove the plastic bag as the plant acclimatize itself slowly. And finally, I come to my last tip, my tip 14. Do not use tap water or any water that contains chlorine as it can jeopardize the whole thing. Normally, I will actually use rain water or if at all I have to use the tap water, I will let it stand out overnight in a bucket before use. I have now come to the end of my video. If you have any questions concerning Flodrendon Mekan, do put in a comment below. And I really appreciate if you can click like, subscribe and support my channel. Hope you have enjoyed the video here and have a nice day. Bye.